Uh, hello, I'm Peter Rosenbaum, and I'm one of several uh, authors and editors of the most recent version of the gross motor function measure. I'm presenting with their permission on behalf of my colleagues, Marilyn Wright, Diane Russell, and Lisa Avery, whose contributions to the book you will be able to see um, from uh, any angle you look at it. Uh, Lisa is a statistical wizard. Uh, Diane was the original co-author of the book, and Marilyn is a very experienced uh, clinician and clinical scientist whose editing and writing of the third edition of the book has been very, very important to us. I hope you find this podcast interesting. Well, the answer is that there have been some important and we think quite exciting developments uh, with our work. They've taken much longer than we would have liked, as is almost always the case. But particularly, there is a gross motor function measure app, which allows people to enter and get scores on the data in real time in the clinic uh, on almost any kind of device that people have available to them. The GMAE, the Gross Motor Ability Estimator, current version is an upgrade of what we've previously had and is an upgrade that allows people to use it in a way that couldn't be used with newer computers and an older software program. We also know that there is material on the Kenshaw website, which allows people to access information about how to use the uh, app and how to use the material. And this is in the book, as well as on our website. The measure is primarily used and primarily developed with and for people with cerebral palsy, but there's good evidence reported in the book about its use for children with Down syndrome and other populations, including children with Zika virus, uh, about whom work has been done by colleagues in other countries. That the book remains important because the measure appears to be important. It seems to be the gold standard evaluative tool that is change detecting measure for looking at motor function in children with cerebral palsy and not just children but adults as well. And while there have been minor modifications of the measure itself, the book provides a detailed account of how to administer and score every item and that has not changed. It remains a resource for therapists and others who are new to the, to the field. And so while many of the people who have been using the GMFM uh, before may not feel they need a change to a newer version, the, even the newest version has some new things for people who didn't know about them. So we encourage everybody to at least consider and look at the table of contents of the new measure. What else is new? The app, as I referred to already, is very useful, but we now have available a criterion test for people who want to see whether they are able to use the GMFM reliably and a training tape. And these are available through the Canchild website. So information about them is in the book. Uh, these resources are new, are updated, and I think are extremely helpful to people who want, certainly who want to do research and need to have uh, highly reliable assessors using the measure in the right ways. I would also add that it is essential that people use the tool in the right way. There is a massive amount of information about the fact that not only is the GMFM used uh, ir irregularly and improperly, but almost every measure that's ever been created has been used both properly and improperly. And if you want to have credibility in your uh, results, you need to know that you've applied the measure, scored the measure, and interpreted the measure in the right way. And the new version of the GMFM book helps people to do that. We don't expect many people, apart from perhaps new clinicians, to read the book from cover to cover. 
the third edition of the book includes material from the first and second editions, and that involves earlier in explanations of how the measure was created, how it works, and so on. So again, that information may be familiar to people who know the material, but I would hope that young clinicians and young researchers would find the whole book interesting because there's a lot in there about measurement, about measurement science, although this is not a book on measurement science. So we encourage people to have a look at it and uh, see what the questions they have, what information they want to explore and to discuss it with their colleagues. And if you have questions, discuss it with us as well. So to summarize, the GMFM uh, lives is uh, old and yet new, and we hope that people will find it uh, a useful resource uh, for their clinic, certainly for their research and uh, for a teaching uh, students about how measures work, how they need to be created and validated. Thanks for being interested.